Hello everyone and welcome back to Seven Kingdoms, the Game of Thrones mod for Total War Attila. My name is Duplex and I'm joined by Pixelated Apollo as we take you through the Siege of River Run. In today's video, you will witness the two key battles that took place during the Siege of River Run, Battle of the Whispering Woods and Battle of the Camps. Leading a host of 18,000 troops from the north, Robb Stark means to confront the Lannister armies in the Riverlands and relieve the forces loyal to his grandfather, which have been under attack for some time. Lord Tywin Lannister has split his forces into two armies, each numbering approximately 30,000 men. One force, under the command of Jaime Lannister, lays siege to River Run, the seat of House Tully. The other, under Tywin's direct command, marches north, along the west bank of the Green Fork of the Trident River, to prevent the Starks from lifting the siege and sends scouts to reconnoiter the Stark position. Rob and his men debate strategy, since they are outnumbered by either Lannister army. Several lords favor a direct confrontation with Tywin's forces, while Great John Umber advocates trying to outflank Tywin, get past him, and then confront Jaime's forces at River Run. Rob is still undecided when one of the Lannister scouts is taken prisoner. He tells Rob that he counted roughly 20,000 men in the Stark host. Rob tells him to carry a message to Tywin, telling him that 20,000 northern warriors are coming to face him. Caitlin Stark negotiates with Lord Walder Frey to allow Rob's army safe passage across the Trident at the Twins. Walder grants the passage and even contributes his levies to Rob's army, increasing Rob's numbers in return for Rob agreeing to marry one of his daughters. However, after crossing the river, the Stark host splits into two forces. One of 2,000 men moves south to confront Tywin, while the others move southwest to confront Jaime. Tywin receives word that the Starks are moving against him. Believing this is the full Stark host, based on the information the captured scout returned to him, he prepares to confront it. In a pitched battle, the Battle of the Green Fork, the Lannisters emerge soundly victorious due to overwhelming superiority of numbers. However, it doesn't take long for them to realize that they have been deceived. All right, so here we are at the Whispering Woods, and Jamie, he's on his way, thinking he's going to kill a small group of people, like a couple hundred, but uh, yeah, he's in for a rude awakening. Indeed he is. He has no idea that Rob Stark has actually crossed the twins after making an alliance with uh, the Freys, and uh, well, here he is. Yep. Waiting to ambush. It's a pretty decent host. It's about 2,000 uh, men from the Westerlands. Uh, but he's thinking he's going up against just a few hundred um, Tully men, so to speak. Um, one of the Pipers, so to speak. The son of uh, um, the Lord of, of uh, House Piper that actually died during the Battle of the Golden Tooth. Um, he's obviously very frustrated at this, and he's been like using about 50 men to raid Lannister supply trains, and I think Lannister's just had a, had about enough of it, that um, kind of behavior here during the Siege of Riverrun, so... It's, it's an overwhelming yeah. force to deal with to deal with uh, a few hundred raiders, but it's also an underwhelming force that's most likely going to get slaughtered if they go up against 20,000-something uh, Northmen hiding in yeah, the forest. Yeah, I mean, he, he's just had victory after victory after victory in this mm -hmm. area, you know, especially after the Golden Tooth, and... He's, been, he's just been chasing down small bands of, you know, troops, so... Mm -hmm. Harassing yeah, the, is... the Riverlands in general and killing lords yeah. and capturing their, their, their capturing seats. Capturing them. Yeah, so he is uh, not expecting such a force like this. But it's a rather massive force still, if you look at it. It's a very, very large uh, army. I mean, thinking about it, Jamie and his position, he, he sallied out with 30,000 men from the Westlands to lay siege to the river run, and he lost very, very few at the Battle of Golden Tooth, and probably has lost very few since, but since he's such an important character, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna want to outnumber the enemy like 20 times anyway. Um, yeah. Know, it's just a small band of raiders. You never know what they're gonna be hiding. So, right now at this moment, um, Tywin Lannister, who left after Jaime, actually thinks he's going up against 20,000 Northmen quite far from here uh, during the Battle of Green Fork, but that's only 2,000. Uh, which has allowed uh, Rob to 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 create a diversion, so he can focus on the uh, the well, the much needed assistance here near River Run, so he can free the free the siege of River Run and kind of like uh, you know focus on one army at a time. So yeah, and also capturing Jamie would be huge for the war effort. Absolutely. So, yeah, this is. I mean, he, Rob's got to be licking his lips at this point. Like, oh, he's going for it. What he's an idiot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and right now Tywin is probably face palming 
quite yeah, hard. Like, like, he's thinking, like, wait this? a minute, this was only 2,000 Northmen, not 20,000. Where are the others? And, yeah. uh, I mean, there ain't no bloody satellite phones I, I to, to make a quick dial here. The scout who gave him that information. The thing is, I think the scout thought he was telling the truth. Um, so there's there's yeah, really no yeah, moral dilemma for him. Like, he didn't know anything else. He didn't know any better. So I'm having yeah, a hard time spotting some of the Northmen, but you can kind of see them hiding in the forest. Yeah, there. yeah, you really gotta zoom out. Oh! Archer volleys! Uh-oh, uh-oh. There we go, the ambush is underway. The North is releasing arrows. Jamie's pulling Jamie, back. Jamie, yeah, he's freaking out. He's getting out of there. I mean, even at this point, you, you can't think that this is, like, that bad until you actually see the infantry appear from no, the forest. No, they did expect at least to meet up with the raiders, but here we go. Yeah. Starkmen well, moving in. What? Confident. Once they saw the North banners, they knew they were in for uh, some trouble. But yeah, here comes how Stark. Guardsmen. Car Stark soldiers moving in oh. as well. And we have Umbers as well moving in. Yeah, how's Lannister? They've got their men just trying to rush forward, trying to get into position, trying to uh, save themselves in this ambush. They know they're surrounded by now, but now they have to just make a solid stand here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, you don't really know in an ambush of what you're facing. So I'm sure the, the soldiers of Lannister, they have hope yeah. of winning this one. Poor crossbowmen getting absolutely cut down there by men from Stark. Yeah, yeah. Car Stark now sending in troops, too. It's fighting just all over the place. Complete chaos. Nicely timed here. Rob Stark moving into the back lines of the Lannister army. Lannister soldiers clashing with the uh, Umbers further up that ridge. Trying to form some sort of battle line here. There seems to be a little bit of a chaotic. Uh, Organization there, they're they're like trying to reform. They're not entirely sure where to f build the, reform their lines. They're just yeah, fighting I mean, all over the place. Just imagine, just like every time you form a line, and then out of nowhere, here comes another horde of troops yeah. coming from a different angle, just having to constantly reform and try to uh, hold some sort of battle line against this uh, ambush army. That's what's so nicely timed about uh, Rob's attack here is that not all the units came out at once. They first, first the front, they first the front, uh, they faced the front uh, against the, the men of Stark first. Uh, yeah. And then later on the car Stark joined in from one flank and now finally the Umbers from the, the high ground to the uh, further back there to kind of like finalize it. And that is really causing a lot of chaotic uh, maneuvering among the Lannister lines. They don't, they're not really sure where to form them up. Yeah, it was well timed by Rob. You know, just everything just fell into place. And so far, we're seeing a lot of Lannisters getting slaughtered and breaking, going back home. Rob's cavalry attacking from the rear, just finishing up some of the, the Lannister spearmen. Overwhelming force. They're not going to be able to stand that. Uh, yeah, you can see Lannisters trying to. Uh, form somewhat of a blockade now they are falling back there you see that little opening there mm -hmm. in this like circle of death that uh, the land or you know the north have decided to ambush Lannister out and here comes Rob Stark once again chasing down the spears who look like they're or swordsmen who are going back to Jamie but yeah jeez oh god and Jamie himself has dismounted he knows that he cannot I think fighting on horseback in a situation like this is going to be a little tricky. He is dismounted and he's uh, calling the the soldiers around him to form some sort of a defense. Yeah, you're just a big target on horseback. He, he in this knows type he's of surrounded by now. Yeah. Some of the remnants of the Lannister convoy is just being muffed up. So do keep in mind that about 6,000 Northmen attacked the 2,000 Lannisters here. So numerically, uh, they were uh, at a disadvantage even at the start of this yeah, fight. Yeah, huge discipline. The enemy are losing their advantage. Not only were they just out positioned to ambush, but they had overconfidence and yeah. it's nice did to look not around. expect a force like this. It's nice to look around the battlefield from a position and just see the scattered chaos and the different little combat going around here and there. 
There's like smaller yeah. battles in themselves all around the battlefield. Yeah, and like, you can see Jamie just perfectly in the center, just like, oh crap. Shit. You know? Yeah, we got this some is bad. archers softening them up as well. Oh yeah, that's true. Trying to take out the bodyguard. But you know that Jamie realizes that he's not going to die here. I mean, he knows he's going to be a prisoner of war and he's going to be used he's, to leverage. I don't think he's leverage. that much. He's probably just sighing right now. Did I yeah, really just, just did I really just fall for this? That's that's the kind of characteristics I'm getting out of Jamie if I if I know him correctly. <laughs> yeah, so there he is surrounded. You can see all of the uh, troops moving in closer and closer. Rob start getting like talking distance to Lannister. All the, the other remaining soldiers either retreating or being cut down. I think once again the main goal is not to kill every single Lannister soldier running away. Uh, Jamie was the target of this this uh, this strike, that's for sure. Yeah. And here he is, getting surrounded. <laughs> it's just game over, Man, Jamie. If I was one of his bodyguards, I'd be like, drop in my weapons, just be like, alright, okay, I'm done. <laughs> I surrender. Yeah, you can see the battle kind of clearing out now. We have some troop movement here on the uh, north side, so to speak. Oh, uh, yep, here they go. It's intimidating. This is definitely yeah, intimidating. Yeah. I mean, you know the North is feeling good right now. Mission accomplished. And that's about it. Zooming out, we see the aftermath of this fight. It was a complete Lannister slaughter, so to speak. Um, and, a, and a very decisive victory for the North and the, uh, the Tullys, who, who were few, but still, the Riverlands were present in this fight. Here we are at the Battle of the Camps. Shortly after the Battle of the Whispering Wood, Rob's objective is now to finish off what he started and to kill the rest of Jamie's Lannister's army currently besieging River Run. It's, uh, it's a rainy, dark night, and the uh, yeah, Lannisters have I mean, no idea what's coming for them. Yeah, I mean, you, you gotta think that the soldiers were somewhat suspicious. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I guess they just assume maybe Jamie's kind of camping out you know like they chase down that small band of troops and they're just kind of resting out there and Tywin of course is out killing 20,000 so he thought mm -hmm. so the troops in the camp they have to be like well maybe they're just out doing their jobs and yeah they'll come back tomorrow and of course there's there's no chance in hell that there's 20,000 Northmen this close to the siege of River Run absolutely not we got all the tally men surrounded and uh, locked in doors, so there's really no reason for these guys to question anything. Which is probably yeah, yeah. Wh why this battle turned out to be the way it was. And because of the limitations of the game, they wouldn't even, I doubt they would have their armor on. You know, they'd be like in normal clothes, resting in their tents. Mm -hmm. Oh, did you hear that horn? Oh, oh, there it is. I hear screams outside the walls. The attack. Yep. The car starts moving in some troops. Here they come rushing through in the, in the cover of the darkness, not spotted by the, the guardsmen. Not expecting the, the camp itself to be attacked by the besieged men, but wait, they're not the besieged ones, they're the Northmen. And they're coming in in force now. Breaching the walls and the battle is about to commence. How terrifying. Lannister, they are just all unorganized. Unorganized and taken by quite surprise. Oof. This is a very fierce Chaos. fighting here. Yes, yes. Chaos in the night. Troops horses just running around, around searching for their gear. Got plenty of horses who are running around too. <laughs> yeah. I see some car starts on the other side of the camp now. Is this kind of splitting up the camp defenders to both sides of the, the camp? Which leaves one main entrance open. Uh, and that's a pretty big issue for the defenders, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. It seems like the north is uh, kind of distracting the different, uh, different uh, flanks of the camp. And the car starts able to just punch a hole right into the defenses. Now marching further into the camp. But look at the main gate. Oh god. <laughs> From Stark and his men. Charging oh, in. Man. 
here to finish what they started. Amount of troops, yeah. Absolutely disgusting. Seeking revenge. I can see Rob Stark's cavalry further back too, riding in in the rain. This was shown briefly in a scene um, in the in the series, just his cavalry lining up. Um, and there was rain and it was all dark, so I think this is a pretty good representation of that brief scene we saw in the series. Yeah, absolutely. Holy crap, look at them charging and in. Lan here. Lannisters uh, forming up their final stand here, it looks like. They're just going around the center of the camp trying to uh, form any kind of defense, any hope of surviving. I have a hard time seeing. Oh, I see a few Lannister guardsmen moving up now. At least some regular uh, men at arms. very hard to tell friend from foe here. Yeah, you'd have to imagine there, there's probably a lot of friendly fire in this. Mm -hmm. Especially from House uh, Lannister because, you know, the soldiers are probably freaking out and just kind of like stabbing Doing carelessly. Whatever. And the archers in the, uh, the the guard towers also just firing at whatever they can, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, into the blobs of, of just dark soldiers, you know? The shadow of a soldier. A lot of blood being spilled near the campfires. Currently illuminating the ground. Oh no, that's just some mounted guardman. I'm trying to catch Rob too. He's a little, gonna be hard to spot here, but he's here somewhere yeah. doing doing the dirty. It's honestly hard to spot anything. <laughs> yeah. Which is obvious I think kind of I love the flames though. Yeah. You can just like see uh, you know what's going on in that small area. It resembles this fight in general, like what the hell is going on? Utter Lannister slaughter. So yeah, some... it, it appears Rob Stark was able to use de deception, using his, his enemy's overconfidence to send relief to River Run. Mm -hmm. This was really just the 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 sort of cherry on top the most of the yeah. deception and uh, he won the battle already at the Whispering Woods essentially uh, this was just a mop up of the and a cleverly cleverly issued assault there we go that is a decisive yeah, victory indeed well we'll have to see where the War of the Five Kings take us next but everyone hope you guys enjoyed this uh, somewhat special video. Two battles in one, kind of uh, summarizing the entire Siege of Riverrun. And uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you, Apollo, and the rest of you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Next, Thanks for watching, guys. The next battle. Ciao.